Thank you so much for joining with me. We are picking up our reading in Journey through the text of A Course in Miracles by Dr. Ken Wapnick, Ph.D. And this is Chapter 7, The Gift of the Kingdom. Today we are picking up on the introduction. Two important themes will be our focus in this, the seventh movement of our symphony. The first is oneness with discussion proceeding from the oneness of heaven and ending with its reflection through forgiveness and healing. The second theme is the body's role in the ego's strategy. As we know, the ego makes the body, separation's symbol and the opposite of oneness, to prove that the separation is real. The goal is accomplished in two significant ways, attack and sickness. We will look at how the ego defends itself against the truth of oneness by its belief in separation and differences, and then how forgiveness corrects these thoughts of attack, healing, undoing the thoughts of sickness. Again, both forgiveness and healing reflect God's oneness, personified by the Holy Spirit in our right minds. The Oneness of God The creative power of God and His creations is limitless, but they are not in reciprocal relationship. You communicate fully with God as He does with you. This is an ongoing process in which you share, and because you share it, you are inspired to create like God. Yet, in creation, you are not in a reciprocal relation to God since He created you, but you did not create Him. These are dualistic words to depict a truth that is totally beyond duality. Jesus corrects the ego's fundamental notion that it is stronger than God. When the Son believed, it separated from its source and ex established an external kingdom better than the kingdom within, it was, in effect, saying, I am God. He is not the first cause. I am. And as we saw earlier, the ego proclaims that it is its own creator, which means we are now self-created instead of God-created. When Jesus says that God created us, but we did not create him, he is undoing the core of the ego's arrogant and insane thought system of separation and autonomy. In truth, there is no God in Christ in heaven, no creator and created. Once again, these dualistic terms speak to us in our dualistic condition and are meant only to express symbolically the perfect unity of heaven that lies beyond all symbols. As God's creative thought proceeds from him to you, so must your creative thought proceed from you to your creations. As I've mentioned before, the term creations is never truly defined in A Course in Miracles. As a symbol for creation or extension, which has nothing to do with the world of time and space, creations cannot be understood by us. Our dualistic language points to what is beyond earthly comprehension. God extends himself and his love, and that extension is called Christ. Since Christ is part of God, he shares his creator's ability to extend his love and self. And these extensions are called creations. Though we speak of God, Christ, and creations, they are truly one, not to be taken as literal truth or searched for in the mind or elsewhere. Jesus simply uses symbols to express the ongoing process of love's extension that occurs in the transpatial and transtemporal dimension of reality. Only in this way can all creative power extend outward. God's accomplishments are not yours, but yours are like his. He created the sonship, and you increase it. In other words, God created us. We did not create him. Nonetheless, we create like him. It is important to note that increase is not meant 
to quantitatively, wait, is not meant quantitatively, being but a spatial metaphor used to depict a non-spatial process. After all, God did not create a certain amount of love to which we add more love. Perfect, infinite, and whole, love cannot be increased any more than it can be decreased. It merely is. And that is a perfect place to stop. I thank you so much for joining with me, and I will see you tomorrow. I love you. Bye-bye.